Here's a look at how stock markets closed on Friday ahead of this morning's open on Wall Street. Overall, things appear to be moving in the right direction. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ uh, were up over 3%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up just under 3%. And all of that, of course, is welcome news after the roller coaster that we have seen. But beyond the stock market, another big topic on many of our minds, of course, is what we just talked about, rent and the price that we pay for everyday goods. A recent study by Moody Analytics says the average American household is paying nearly $6,000 more annually than we were just 18 months ago. Just last week, the nation's inflation rate declined from 9.1% to 8.5%. So joining us live is our financial expert, Mark Gravicheski from the Quad Cities Investment Group to break this all down for us. Mark, good morning to you. Hey, good morning to you, David. Good to see you again. Yeah, you as well. And while it's nice to see that inflation rate going down, I wonder if many people are noticing a big change right now with the exception of maybe gas prices. So I'm curious, what is your take on that recent report? When the Department of Labor reported the latest consumer price index on Wednesday morning, it certainly was a welcome sight to have that inflation drop from you know 9.1% down to 8.5%. Uh, and that certainly did play a large part in last week's uh, 3% rise in the stock market that you know you just mentioned. Uh, but you know, look, any decline in the inflation rate is a good thing, but we have to keep this in, in perspective. It, doesn't mean that consumer prices have suddenly declined. It, it means that the rate at which prices are rising has simply gotten smaller. Uh, with an inflation rate of 8.5%, consumer prices have risen on average uh, by 8.5% over the last 12 months. And when you consider, David, that the, you know, the ideal target rate of inflation within our country is around 2%. You know, we still have a, a very long way to go before we get back to, uh, you know, some semblance of normalcy. Right. It's hard to look at that graph you have for us where just, you know, January of 2021, we were at like 1.4%. Now we're at still over 8%. So what do you think is behind the sudden decline of inflation that we saw in last week's report? Well, you know, for July, David, the main driver was a reduction in six percent in july uh, but again that said energy prices are still 33 percent higher than they were 12 months ago uh, but whether this decline in energy prices is more uh, you know short term versus long term be becomes much more of an unknown factor uh, what happens to u.s energy policy uh, does opec start to increase oil production a little bit more there's just a lot of geopolitical factors to play uh, in the energy sector. Well, and I think now you have to break out the crystal ball a little bit. Do you think that inflation is going to continue to decline or are we going to see a bump in the coming months? Well, you know, Wall Street remains heavily divided on that very question, David. You know, back in April, inflation suddenly declined from, you know, 8.5 down to 8.3 percent. But but even then, David, many Wall Street heavyweights uh, argued that inflation had peaked. You know, likewise, many argued that inflation, uh, you know, could quickly ramp up again in the upcoming months, which it certainly did. Uh, but fast forward to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, today, David, and those very same competing arguments uh, on Wall Street persist. Uh, once again, some argue inflation peaked uh, uh, in June at 9.1 percent. Others argue, though, uh, that inflation could easily ramp up again in the upcoming months. And Mark, you've said many times in this segment that you see inflation remaining historically high for quite some time. So after you see this last report, do you still feel that way or do you feel more optimistic? You know, talking about, you know, the crystal ball, I, I mean, you know, for me though, David, you know, nothing has really changed. You know, whether June's rate of 9.1% of turns out to be the, you know, proverbial peak of this inflationary cycle or not, I still think we're going to be in a very gradual decline, uh, you know, back to that that target rate of 2%. Uh, you know, inflation comes back to, to this, David. Inflation is simply too much money chasing too few goods. And, and there's currently 40% more uh, U.S. dollars floating and circulating around the economy than there was uh, back in February of 2020 before the pandemic. And, and that's... A, that's just an inherent recipe for inflation, David. 
And that's why I do think inflation will remain historically high, uh, potentially even in 20. All right, Mark, thank you so much for your expertise this morning. Good seeing you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too.